Guys, welcome to Rotoride. Today, we're looking at all of our signature frames. I'm Alex Vanover, and this is the Vanny Style. I'm Ladrib, and this is the Skyliner Mark III. And I'm Bubby FPV, and this is the Moxie. And I'm Les Flair C, and this is the Tank. So we're going to be talking about the different frames that we've designed, why we designed them this way, what are some of the advantages that we put into our own designs, what are some of the disadvantages that some of the other guys might see in our own designs, and just kind of talk about you know, why you might want to choose one over the other. Figure out which one of these might be best for you if you're looking for a new drone frame. Now, we're not saying these are the best or only frames out there on the market. These are just our signature frames, all available at rotorat.com. Of course, there are tons of drones out there, and you can shop other stores and all sorts of other options to your heart's content. But uh, these are geez, these are the best. These are the best. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, no, just the Moxie is the best. Wow. Is that right? <laughs> okay, so this is the Vanny style frame. So all these frames are five-inch frames. This frame had inspiration from a couple other frames that I flew before, mainly the like Impulse RC Apex, as well as the Pirate frames Hook V2. One of the key notable features of this frame is that it is a toilet tank frame, meaning you can put your battery sideways or vertically, which is nice. It also has this clever little piece called the puzzle piece on the bottom. What this allows you to do is in the event that you break a front bottom plate, you leave that piece in there, you pull the front bottom plate off and replace it. The arms stay in place. Saves you a lot of time while you're out there in the field. It's also, I believe, the lightest frame out of all these. This comes in at 120 grams before you know adding 3D prints and stuff like that. That's with the stack screws. So super lightweight frame, five and a half millimeter thick arms, two and a half millimeter thick plates all around, and uh, is compatible with all the uh, major FPV video systems. The Skyliner Mark III, uh, first thing you'll probably notice is the front camera cage. It is a carbon fiber camera cage. We've got big openings up here where you'll have 3D printed inserts. That's going to give you a lot of flexibility in mounting your camera. So you'll have a pretty easy ability to run uh, the big walk snail camera, the small walk snail camera, the O3, the OG DJI camera, whatever you want, this will get it done. The standoffs between the main plate and the top plate are 20 millimeters, which I think gets that center of gravity a little bit lower. I can really feel the difference. I enjoy it. It does make the build a little bit more difficult. Uh, the arms are pretty wide on this as well, which I like. I kind of like having some of that resistance as you push through the air. We can argue about <laughs> why that's good or bad later on. This is a little bit more old school having the wider arms. I have been in the game for a while, so I don't mind things being a little old school. It gives you the room to have individual ESCs if you're wanting to do that for whatever reason. This is the third iteration of my signature frame, and I'm just really happy with it. All right, so this is the Moxie, and this is kind of a smash of two frames. The uh, flight test had an old six inch frame that I really liked. <laughs> 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 it, it, flight test of all people. Um, and then I used to fly the Skyliner, so I kind of took those two. School bus style frame, um, but the one thing that I really wanted was to have a standoff up top because I just think it's so much more durable if mm -hmm. you have your GoPro mount, you know, mounted through a standoff. Before I had this, I was ripping GoPro mounts off all the time. It was super annoying, so I haven't broken. It's it's very rare that I break GoPro mounts with this. Um, you know, I have a lot of room inside, so building this is going to be very easy. Similar to Drew's frame where I have really wide arms because I used to fly individual ESCs. One thing, I do have my arm protection pointing forward a little bit. For my flying style, I'm basically always going forward, so really good motor protection on front end hits. It fits all the major HD systems, walk snail, DJI. This is the tank. All my screws oh. are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I built like oh my gosh. the bathroom. Right. It is so yeah. fast. Guys, this is the tank, and I built this frame for ultimate durability as the number one factor for most of my decisions. Like Alex, I took inspiration from a lot of different frames. The first frame I ever designed, I've been designing frames for like 10 years, and the first frame I ever designed was back in 2013. So I've had a lot of years to figure out what not to do and what breaks and where it breaks. I designed this with ultimate protection in mind. I designed this for beginners because my idea here was to f repair less and fly more. You know, because I like to fly hard, and you're not getting any better if you're not crashing. The first thing you might notice is the aluminum cage protecting the camera. It's extremely rigid and durable. Eight millimeter thick arms. Yes, I said it, eight millimeter thick arms. It's ridiculous. You're never going to break an arm in this tank. If you do, please hit me up and uh, tag me in the post if you ever break an arm, because I still haven't broken one. These arms are awesome. If you ever do happen to break one, I have a notch in the arm, which is really cool because it makes for easy removal and reinstallation of an arm, all you have to do is remove two screws. So if you ever do break an arm, you don't have to loosen the Loctite on all of your bottom plate screws to get the arm out. It's a really great idea there, I think. That's the tank. It's all about durability. I think we should have three categories. So I think we should start with ease of build slash repair. Mm -hmm. We should go into performance, and then I think we should finish up with durability. Yeah, and say like performance slash 
feel. Right, yeah, right. exactly. Like, how yeah. does it feel in the air, not just performing? Because they all perform very well, but, like, what's the feeling difference? Because they all do fly a little bit different than each other. The order you set is interesting because the first thing you're going to experience with a frame, uh, unless you buy a fully built drone, yeah. is mm -hmm. the build process yourself. Yeah. That's going to be your first impression, the first thing that gives you a feeling yeah. about the frame you just got, yeah. putting it together, right? So, yeah. I mean, what, what did you think about with yeah. yours. That looks a little crazy to me. You got like mm. multiple plates it's down really there. It's really not crazy though. No? I mean, it's actually really simple. So there's a couple little things on this frame. It's probably not going to be the easiest frame in the world to assemble. I would say it's, you know, if you built, you know, something like a CL1 before, I think you'll have no problem building this. Maybe as a good like second quad bit. I mean, I have a build video on my YouTube channel, so you mm -hmm. can just watch me assemble this frame. You know, you have a top plate, a mid plate, a bottom plate, and arms. We have these vertical plates, which I didn't talk about too when I was overviewing the frame. The nice thing with the vertical plates too is they add a lot of rigidity to the frame. So in terms of assembling this thing, you can assemble it in about 10 minutes. I did a lot of little touches though to make the assembly easier, mm -hmm. especially when you're installing your electronics. I made these little press nuts right here in the 30 by 30 stack so that way when you're threading your stack screw through you don't have to hold like an M3 lock knot on and do this yeah, you just thread right. your Cause... stack screw up all the way in yeah normally you'd have to put like a long screw and then yeah. you put a nut yeah. and then but now you don't have to use that separate nut it's built right into the frame yeah absolutely and I believe I'm one of the first to do that I know there are some very very old race flight frames that did that but I haven't seen any modern freestyle frames do that so there's a lot of little attention to detail when it comes to building these things mm -hmm. uh, I think in all what all of our frames but that's just kind of what it is for mine so I mean it's a pretty standard frame assembly though nothing too special putting mine together you know I think it's probably a little bit more complicated because the front cage uh, there's a couple different pieces that have to come together all the pieces up front have an interference fit and kind of bring each other into, into a bit of a tension to make things nice and rigid so you've got your main plate and then you've got a stiffener that goes up front and then you've got the side plates that insert over the main plate and butt up against the stiffener and then the top plate locks it all together and it makes it very nice and rigid mm -hmm. and the, but the first time you do it it might be a little bit yeah. confusing but once you get it the first time you never have to do it again because you can pull off the top plate and uh, service everything you can even pull the camera in and out mm -hmm. uh, from the side plates without having to disassemble it and if you do build another frame, once you have experienced it once, it, it goes a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. That's probably the only real hang up, but other than that, it's pretty standard. Individual arms, a lower stiffener. I don't, I don't think you're looking at anything too crazy. I'd say maybe like intermediate build. The most difficult thing about the build overall is the limited space between the main and the top plates. Being only 20 millimeters tall mm -hmm. does mean you have to be really conscious of getting your electronic mm -hmm. stack close together yeah. Cause you, but not so close that they make contact and right. short out. Yeah. Not so close that it touches the carbon and shorts mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Or not so high that the battery strap hits right. it or whatever. But if you take your time and use the right spacers and all of that, there is plenty of space mm -hmm. to get everything yeah. done in there. You just need to be careful, check, double check. Right. It's not too bad. Yeah. So my frame is very easy to assemble. It is brace plate, arms, and bottom plate. They just screw in there and it's really rigid. They're all meeting at the center. Um, no flexing in the arms either way and besides that you have six standoffs and a top plate and some camera plates i'd say this is one of the easier frames to assemble yeah. the only thing that might be a little challenging is maybe getting the 3d prints to fit right with the camera plates besides that very basic frame so like alex i'm using the split deck design meaning you have a bottom plate and a mid plate that are on different planes uh, and that gives you the ability to have a lot of extra space for the camera uh, but it also shrinks the space uh, in between. So I also, like Drew and like Alex, have 20 millimeter standoffs, so I have that same problem of having very limited space here, just like they do. I actually stole this design from Alex. My frame was in manufacturing when Alex's video came out, and I literally stole his press nut design for the stack. I said I had to have that in my design. I called him up and I said, add that to my frame, please. So that's a really great design, having the press nuts for the stack. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Good job on that one. I stole it from you. I love having these 3D printed camera mounts. I stole this idea from Ladrib's frame. I flew the Skyliner for two years before I designed my own frame, and it was the strongest frame I had ever flown up until now. 
at least in my opinion. I had to make mine ultra thick. I, want, I wanted to have the same strength of the arms of the Skyliner. The uh, Skyliner arms were very strong when I was flying it. And I, when I designed this frame, I wanted to have the same strength, but I didn't want to have that width. So I basically tried to take the width and the height and just change the dimensions to have the same strength or the same overall cubic space here. So I now have a 10 millimeter by eight millimeter arm instead of, what is it like? 12, 14 millimeter by four, four millimeter or something, something like that. Yeah. So I basically just wanted the same strength, but in a different shape. It's toilet tank design, just like Alex's. The toilet tank design is great for batteries. It keeps you from ejecting batteries as often. It keeps your GoPro protected from a frontal, a frontal impact where your battery would move forward normally with a standard uh, battery strap. So it keeps your battery from being able to move forward and crush the GoPro in a crash. It's really great for that. Uh, I was actually turned on to that by PDEVX when I visited him, and he told me the benefits of that, and I said, I have to have that on my, fr my next frame design. So the aluminum cage, ain't nothing get past that baby right there. The TPU camera mounts make it extremely easy to choose your camera type, camera size, camera spacing, camera distance, front and back. You can make all kinds of modifications just by making a different TPU insert piece. And I stole that design from LaDrip's frame. It was a great idea and I had to have it in my frame. Like I said, I took a lot of inspiration from other people's frames. As far as ease of build, it's very simple. You got a couple plates, a couple arms, slap them together, super easy. I think you'll have the same ding against yours that I have with that 20 millimeter spacing. Mm -hmm. Keeps things really tight. I, I feel like if I had to rank it, mm -hmm. Sean's and mine would probably be the most difficult frames to build. Mm -hmm. If I had to choose, I'd say mine would probably be just slightly more difficult because mm -hmm. you're playing carbon fiber puzzle pieces with the front cage. You got versus, a few puzzle pieces over there on Alex's but your aluminum, too. But your aluminum end is all threaded and everything. Uh -huh. There's not, it's yeah. pretty clear how that goes. Right. You know, then I think Alex is. That's probably medium. Yeah, I mean the We've nice got thing with some small bits. The but. nice, the only small bits on this one really are the vertical plates. But the nice thing about the vertical plates is you can actually assemble your mid plate and your bottom plate together. Just it's like mm -hmm. Lego. It just snaps together. So then your arms only have one channel to go. They're not like you're not like holding the arms in while you're starting to get the screw there. Yeah. So I actually feel like it's there's really only one way to do it. And again, I have a build video. I would say that in terms of you know the ease of building them, I would say mine might be a tiny bit easier than Sean's, but Sean's is pretty easy. I think yours is a big step up, and I think yeah. Bubby's is a big step the other way in terms of easy to I build. I think this is the easiest frame. Yeah, just the one. tallest standoff, mm -hmm. so like you can right. fit any electronics in there and not have any issues yeah. with like fitment or anything like that. So Yeah, this is going to be super easy to put together. I mean, I'd say the easiest frame out there to throw together is the CL2, yeah. and this is like a baby step above that mm -hmm. just because the camera yep. plates mm -hmm. stick up through that but that's really not too much to deal with, oh, right? Yeah. If ease of building it is gonna be something to think about, you know, I think that's a pretty fair ranking. Yeah. But what about like maintenance? I mean, I think, are any of them easier or harder to maintain? Mine is probably actually a little bit harder because mm. we have to deal with, you know, once you take off the top plate, the camera plates might come out a little bit. Mm, so okay. it's not like yours, your yeah, camera is- you can take off it. my, you can take my top plate off with just one, two, three, four yeah, screws, top plate screws. comes off. Nice. The cam the front cage doesn't go anywhere. So yeah. it's really easy to get in there mm. and fix what you need, but you've got more I've, screws and things are gonna flop around. Oh, cause the mm -hmm. mid thing up there. So you've got eight screws eight you gotta screws. take out. Yeah, yeah, so that's a little bit, mm. well, it's yeah. easier to maybe put together. It's gonna be a little bit harder to work on. So you've got you've got a few less screws than I do, but you actually have to move your GoPro out of the way, whereas I can actually mm. take all six screws out without moving my GoPro. So that's, that's kind nice. of an interesting thing to think that's about. That's true. Well, you know, with mine, Yours just rotates you unbolt forward, the, yeah. the two front ones and then the GoPro will actually kind of hinge forward, right. mm -hmm. which isn't too bad. And you only yeah. have two screws really back there too once you do that. Yeah. Right. Mine's, you know, kind of somewhere in the middle of those. Like you can take the, the top plate off. It's got seven screws because I do a single standoff in the back, which is probably actually the most obvious difference between all the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like the camera mounts, when you have a camera on there, these snap in they're pretty they're pretty snapped in there so like I don't really have the camera mounts move that might be one little thing but you know the biggest thing for mine I already touched on it a little bit as well is just this puzzle piece again it's ironic because I don't break bottom plates on this but if you did have to fix that or service it that would be pretty easy yeah. I mean I think in terms of serviceability I think Sean and I Sean went for serviceability. Yeah, there's one more thing about mine that makes it, there's one more thing about mine that makes it a little bit unique is that's the fact that I can take my arm out with only two screws. I can literally loosen two screws and in the field I would never have to break the Loctite on the other other six screws to remove my arm because of this notch well, that I put that in. That is nice. So yes. that is nice because on mine, you're going to have the button head of the screw right. for the stack under there. So when you want to take an arm out of mine, you completely remove the two screws of the arm that you want to replace as well as loosen up all the other ones and you can get it out of there and then you bring it back in. So it might make it more difficult. I might argue that when you're 
putting it back in, you would want to have everything loosened up so that when yep. you torque it back down, it gets all the arms pushed and, and mm -hmm. tightened together versus yeah. yours. I don't know. I, I don't know how big of a difference it's really going to make. He doesn't break arms. But right. I kind of <laughs> think more about like when you're tightening the lug nuts mm -hmm. on a car, right? right. You'd want to go around them or, or crisscross pattern, something like that. You wouldn't want to just, you know, if you remove one, just maybe put that That's one back on. Point. You might want to tighten everything back up. I have literally cranked these down as tight as I can get them without mm -hmm. stripping them out. And I can still just take two screws out, slide it out, slide it back in. It's yeah. that simple. Well, that's probably not that yeah. huge. It was just, you know, something in my engineer brain. I'm like, right. Yeah, I, I thought about that too, and that's why I tested it right. before I made it a thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to touch on, and then it'll kind of lead uh, just one more topic about the build, is with my frame, similar thing to Drew and Bubby. If you're using a 30 by 30 stack, you want to loosen the other screws to pull the arm out. The nice thing, though, is if you're using a 20 by 20 stack on this, the screws are countersunk. So the downside is you have to install them before you put the arms on. Mm -hmm. The positive, though, is you can slide the arms straight out because they're countersunk. Mm -hmm. Now, do your guys' frames do 20 by 20? My frame for the stack is only 30 by 30. Yeah. Only 30, only 30. Okay, only so 30. of the frames here, the only one that could support 20 by 20 ESC and flight controller would be the uh, Vanny style. Yeah, and to be fair, the reason I wanted to do that is because I know a lot of racing pilots who fly freestyle a little bit as well, and most of them come from 20 by 20 stacks. Mm -hmm. I also just wanted to be able to have 20 by 20 stacks to use as well, have that option. You can save, you know, an extra eight grams, and as we're going to get grams. into, uh, I'm the stickler when it comes to performance. But you know, I want to drive an F1 car. I don't want to drive a bus. No, that's fair. And for someone that's that concerned about weight, yeah. it makes sense. But I think for us, I don't. I'm for never going to run a 20 oh, by 20, right? No, no, a 20 by 20 ESC can't take my abuse. Yeah. You know, there's no way. But at least, I don't, I don't know at least have the option, though. It's nice to have the option, but I wouldn't want to sacrifice. Uh, strength or any strength or, or even placement of the holes or anything if I'm never going to use them because this yeah. is my frame so yeah. you no, know I, I kind of want it to be exactly what I'm I right want, there with right? you yeah I, I have no desire to ever use a 20 by 20 and I don't want to have to modify my frame to make it fit absolutely right. yeah yeah so if you want the option for 20 by 20 you got the CL2 which is very flexible frame or Alex's you get the style. Danny style baby it's nice you know so I think we should move on we've talked a lot about like the ESA build and everything like that I think we should maybe move on to how they actually fly in the air and what's different about them, mm -hmm. maybe advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. yeah, I think of the drones here, the most different is going to be yes. yours because yeah. yours builds. These will fly very similar, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, Sean's and mine's are going to be really close. Yeah. I think the biggest difference between ours is maybe the width of the arm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to have a little bit more resistance from my thrust disc versus yours with that narrower arm, you'll get yeah. more air moving. I think mine might be 20 grams heavier than yours. Yours is heavier than mine, though, Maybe right? Maybe 20 grams oh, heavier than yours. Heavier. That's a, it's a, it's a yeah. tank. Well, let's start, with, let's start <laughs> with the aerodynamics before we get into the weight. I mean, I definitely have the thinnest arms besides uh, Sean out of everyone here. So right. these are really thin. The nice thing is this just cuts through the air really nice. I do definitely feel a difference. I flew the Skyliner for a little bit of time, really enjoyed flying it, but it definitely just felt a little draggy through the air. Right. But really, that's you know about it and, and everything else they pretty much fly about the same. Mm -hmm. But I almost like some of that drag and some of that momentum yeah, that the heavier drones feel like. I feel like when I'm pushing through a turn, it'll, the weight will like carry me and I will mm -hmm. slide more. Yeah. Like I'll kind of like drift through mm -hmm. a turn unless I really, you know, bank it and have the thrust to, to stop it. Whereas I feel like those, you know, light frames, they really bite, they really grip, they're really racy. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming from a race background yeah. and you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably used to that really yeah. bitey, sharp. Like, I feel like uh, it. It, it kind of reminds me of like driving a car. Like that has more gription, and this is a little yeah. bit more of a drifty boy. So you yeah, know. possibly there's a little bit now. But why do you? Because you also run the wide arms. So what? What's your reasoning for those? Um, when I was designing the frame, I was flying individual ESCs. Got it. Um, got also, it. I do feel it's just more durable. Yeah, I mean, like I guess aerodynamics is not yeah, something. Spoiler. I, I, exactly. I fly a spoiler. <laughs> That's all you have to. Yeah, I just I don't think Aaron and Adam. How's that for drifting? It's great. You know um, what? Watch I, his latest flight video. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. his latest flight video. Right? <laughs> right? Results, man. Results. Yeah. Like I mean, you, you kind of kill the game. I, the, the spoilers. <laughs> I, for the record, I'm just saying I was running spoilers. He, back he, in. I did get the idea from him because an old Road Ride episode. Um, <laughs> I, I think for the in terms of flight feel with my quad. Um, I really wanted to have something that's heavier. Just looking at Alex. I'm we're going to talk, wait, hold on. Talk, finish aerodynamics. And okay, we're going to go into weight. 
25 millimeter standoffs, I do like the way it swings more than like a 20 mm, millimeter standoff. Yeah, it's higher. It's yeah. higher. So I've, I've flown them, both of them, and I always go back to just liking taller standoffs. I just, I just like the way it. Yeah. yeah. And if we're talking aerodynamics, I think Sean and I win because both of our front ends are curved. Look yeah, at this. but you have okay, a GoPro. We have a curve. Curve. Right. I'm talking about <laughs> just saying, you saw yeah, a, really giant, like, you have a giant GoPro. GoPro ignore the wind sail. Ignore, ignore the wind, wind sail. sail. Look at this beautiful, uh -huh. it basically looks yeah. like an airplane with a But spoiler. Everybody looks at the tank and they think, oh my gosh, it's so heavy. It's literally only 50 grams heavier than the lightest frame here, which is the Vanny style. And yeah. honestly, I don't feel it. I'm running these big old powerful Let's Fly RC motors on there with 6S power and I got all the power. I don't, this thing, thing is, is a so rocket. triggered. It yeah. looks so uh, triggered. Here's the thing. It's, like, it's, like, it's a rocket. You mean you can't feel 50 grams? I feel one rocket. gram. If you, a add, if you add a single piece of electrical tape to Alex's drone, he'll feel it. He's like the, the princess Here's the, the thing. The mentality, I understand where he's coming from. Let, let's, and this is a good time to segue into the weight, because we talked aerodynamics, but let's talk about weight. I understand, this is something that drives me a little crazy, because yes, my frame is, it's not even the lightest freestyle frame on the market, although, one thing I will say is it is one of the lightest, but it's, it's also the lightest very, one on this table. It's definitely the lightest <laughs> on this table by a long shot. This is again 120 grams, but my thing with weight is that it's not just about the frame being, okay, Sean says his frame is only 50 grams heavier. It's the mentality. Like, if your mentality is it's only 50 grams heavier, which is a lot of weight, like, then you're just going to slap on a ton of electrical tape and do this and do oh, that. And, you mean the TPU and that, mouse? And, like, all that <laughs> stuff on all these guys, like, <laughs> it just adds so much weight. And Come for on, me, when it's going, medicine. yours looks good. Did you, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think yours is definitely lighter than me um, John's. But, but what I'll say is when it comes, this speaking of the flight feel in the air, I prefer to fly a sub 700 gram quad. Now, before I went to the Hero 11, I was at 656 grams with a 1300 milliamp battery Session 5, which is really, really lightweight. I think you guys are in like the 800s. Now I'm right at 700 grams, and to be honest, I'm not super happy about it, but unfortunately it's just kind of what we have yeah. GoPro-wise to fly. Um, I can definitely see where these guys come from with that 800 gram weight, like what they're flying. You get a little bit more like uh, momentum through turns and stuff like that. So I've I felt that going up in weight, yeah. um, but at the same time, I'm still not happy with where I'm weighing. But regardless, I like to fly a really lightweight quad. I like the feel in the air. I don't feel issues with like being able to swing over things. It's just nice and crisp and locked in and it tunes really well. And I do come from a racing background, so weight is super important. Yeah. I just think like, think about like a, a cue ball, and a tennis ball, you throw them, right? I mean, you just kind of have that Feel, throwing that heavier ball just kind of mm -hmm. feels better. You feel like it's going to go further. Tennis ball being lighter is going to, you know, I know these aren't tennis balls, right? It's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. different. How, yeah. how much is it actually, it, it's tough to say, like do the free body diagram. Mm -hmm. How much is the air resistance going to matter when you toss it over in a split ass? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I, just going off of like what I actually feel, feel when yeah. I fly, and I I like the weight. Maybe it's just what I'm, I'm right used there to, with but, you. Like I literally. But just there's recently... a point of diminishing returns. You've gone too far, baby. <laughs> <Yes>. That's <laughs> way. That's a little bit too. And this what this? You're a little uh, too far. But so I, 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 I did recently. I did recently try to eliminate the GoPro because in my mentality in building this, I was looking at the frame as being the lightest material that we have to make things with. Carbon fiber is the lightest. Hundred percent agree. You look at what he's doing, cutting these little science holes out of here to right. save half a gram. It's pointless. You're, this you're is just the lightest material it, never per square inch there. that we have. Never broken. The lightest like material there. per square inch that we have. Why are never we? Broken why are we obsessed with taking away the carbon fiber? You we should be focused on these giant heavy batteries and these giant heavy GoPros. Yeah. So I recently just tried to eliminate my GoPro and see if I could run the O3 Air Unit by itself, and I literally had to retrain myself. It took me like. An so then you day. could feel the weight. I did feel the weight. Oh, difference. so Mister, I can't feel the weight. No, well, yeah, when you no I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Fl I couldn't do the same things I used to be able to do in the same way. I literally had to retrain myself. And, Power and loops I were different. You it's still heavier. And I did notice that it was easier to do tricks like trippy spins and wow. Matty flips wow. and things like that wow. with less weight. What a shocker! The quad flies better but than the slider. I didn't. <laughs> what a shocker! But I didn't what like a, revelation, guys. You heard it here on Rotorite <laughs> in 2023. But when I <laughs> wow. But when I tried to flick myself over a tree, for example, I didn't get that same distance. Mm -hmm. So when I went to go punch it to go fly over a tree, I'm landing in the middle of the tree instead of making it all the way across. Well, it's simple, so, you know, you just yeah. cack it over more. One thing I want to say on the science holes, <laughs> it's just, I mean, you Throttle guys, longer, yeah, I get it. Uh -huh. One thing I want to say with the science holes is I, these in particular are not meant for weight savings. 
Uh, the ones on the front here where I usually use zip ties to mount capacitors, receivers. These ones on the back here cool the VTX. I'll give you points for cooling the VTX. Yeah, that's a big one. That. You know, like these guys, like there's nothing there. There's nothing no, there. Mine's flat. There's nothing no cooling. there. Yeah. So again, like I'm thinking like my when I designed this frame, the back of my mentality, I'm like, I want it to feel like I'm driving an F1 car. I don't mm -hmm. want to be driving a V8 Mustang. I want to drive an F1 car. So there are sacrifices to be made, which we'll get into in our next category. Although, when we tell you talk about durability, it's very, very durable. I, I'll give you points for the science holes that have a purpose, like cooling the video transmitter. No I like that. Um, I mean, the ones on the top plate, these two V holes, that's prob those are probably the only ones that truly serve no purpose. Yep. And I would say, you know, I'd get rid of them. Even though you're saying you never haven't. Broken a I know you've never have. It's just like, why introduce that weak spot? Because it's you know, carbon that's fiber. A is is a weave and I, I want to talk about this more the arms you know it's a weave this is not a piece of aluminum so the more wear the more interlacing that you can have the the more structural integrity the piece is going to is going to have so when i look at like right here you know but the distance between this edge of that hole mm -hmm. and the edge of your yeah. top plate you've got like one and a half yeah um strands of carbon like that's yeah. that's not a lot like mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I just wouldn't do that. I mean, right? I agree. I mean, I I like to design frames too that look really really good. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just part of it. And I've never broken a top plate there, it so look nice. you and know it looks nice. And obviously, it's, it's funny because you like cover it up with the battery, but you know, like right. when you're flying it, you don't even see it on here, for example. Well, so even I on my that. first version of the Skyliner, I I had some science holes in he's the top plate, he's it up, but he ended up covering it up with a battery anyway. That's what I, you know. Technically, he's making up for it by having four standoffs. I mean, they are really close together mm -hmm. versus yours being really wide and yeah. You know, that makes a difference cool. in strength also. And it's not ex perfectly exact, but the battery, too, kind of sits, like, right here. So it's almost like pushing on the standoffs. It's got right. a little bit more than just the top plate yeah. to support it. And they are close as well. At least it's not like those old school frames oh, yeah. had all these cuts. It's like people yeah. were looking at carbon fiber the wrong way. And this was the really <laughs> early, yeah. early oh, version. Yeah, this is very early, early versions of drone frames. So no hate, all love. But, right. I mean, they had what were truss shapes cut out of them. Mm -hmm. And it's like... This isn't aluminum. You right. don't want to cut <laughs> yeah. carbon fiber right. into a truss shape. You want to have a nice, even sheet. You want right. lots of the weave going on. You want to have lots of, uh, of uh, inner lacing strands of carbon fiber. And when you cut out this mm -hmm. truss shape, you've made it weaker to save, like you're saying, just a couple grams. It's the lightest material per. Right. Yeah. Lightest material per square inch that we use in our drone frame. So why are we trying to make it so much smaller? Mm -hmm. yeah, but when we can focus on the other parts that are really heavy per square inch. There aren't any science so, holes I'd want to add to mine other than maybe I'd cave in yes. and do a couple slots yeah. down here yep. to help with cooling. But it's not that I have any problems with overheating or anything. So. Yeah, I've never had yeah but it helps your, v it's just, it helps your VTX, I think. I want to talk a little bit more, not me in particular, but about the performance, because you guys all, like, I think these progressively get heavier <laughs> as you, like, go That's along. Well, what, do you, um, what's the olive weight of your build? Like, I don't know. You don't know? Okay, well, my, the <laughs> olive <laughs> heaviest. Is that, I don't even I care. Just, so the, the olive weight that I prefer to fly at is anywhere from 840 to 860 grams. <laughs> cool. I'm south of 800. I think I'm, yeah, like, like, close to 760, 70. 750, okay. somewhere in there. Yeah, I'm at, um, this one right here, I think, was, like, 863 or something like that. So we're just going to call Sean uh, even 9. So <laughs> got no, seven. it's not that heavy. <laughs> but Tyler put mine on the scale, and he said that wasn't that bad. Well, it depends on what GoPro you're flying. If I think if you subtract the GoPro, like... Let's just say 650 to 700 grams is like, I think the heaviest you can build this thing is like Yeah, so you fly like an Action 2, so yours is a lot lighter because of that. I'm is it still 700 though oh, with an Action right. 2? I'm over, oh, over 7. I think with the Action, I don't know, no, man. It's over, somewhere, I, I've it well. might be below <laughs> 750 with the Action 2, but okay. I'm going to call it 750 is okay. my, my issue. Yeah, yeah, I'm running a full size Hero 11. That's really chunky. So, I so think you're over 800. Oh, yeah. 860. Oh, wow. yeah 860. Mine was 8 something. I just don't remember what it was. Do you know what your raw frame weight is on yours? I don't. I think I weighed yours one time. What I like it? it was like 150 or something like that. I, I, but it's the mentality of the build. Like when you have a longer frame too, you know you're running longer wires. And again, I know it sounds crazy, but like that, all, that, all those things add up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you so do they, sound crazy, but <laughs> you're you're a fantastic pilot. Yeah. And people who are usually fantastic at their craft mm -hmm. are a little bit crazy, yeah. a little bit obsessive, exactly. right? Sometimes not always. And you right? flew my quad. So. We did an episode on it. That's okay. Yeah, you were just like, it flies so good. It does, it does fly good. It does fly good. I guess I just, um, I don't know. I don't necessarily want everything as crisp and as 
you just like it everything. loose. I like things a little looser, a little bit more, you know, I, I don't, a little more flowy, right? I mean, I, I just, I'm a little he bit more flexible in what I, I do fly for so us, do I. You know? I know, oh, I was going to get to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I think when it comes to performance, like when you're looking at these frames, they all perform very well. You've seen all of us fly, so it doesn't really matter. I think I could probably fly, maybe the exception of Sean's, my <laughs> style. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I feel like I could fly Drew's. My style pretty closely, maybe Bubby's, but again, it just everyone has a different style, and I think all of our flying styles are built around what we fly, like yeah, the snappiness of my style, the more flowiness of yours with that weight, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So if you're looking for something that's really lightweight, you want something crisp, maybe if like you're flying Spang, for example, definitely go for a lightweight frame like yeah, this, 100%. Spang. Maybe if you're going for really big flowy lines, which again, I feel like I can do with this, but maybe that's an argument for your guys, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if you just don't know what your flow is and you just don't want to Let's, we didn't, we're not talking about durability. Not, no, we can get into durability now because okay. I think we've talked enough about performance. Right. Maybe you just don't care about which style. Maybe you, don't know, maybe you don't know which style you're looking for yet. Maybe you're just a beginner looking for a new drone and you just don't want to have to worry about breaking your drone. Let's talk about durability. That's a fair argument too. I mean, like, if you're just starting out, mm -hmm. get something that's, that's really tough. Like, I would say, mm -hmm. Alex, you're... Your I'm not frame saying mine is the least durable frame here because that's oh, what it definitely is. You broke two arms. It's definitely not. Definitely not. Well, it's, you broke well, two it's, arms yesterday. Not, Alex, Alex. <laughs> it I is not of two in one desk on this table. That's I disagree. It's definitely the least durable, but it's still an extremely durable frame. Right. Okay. Like, I I, I, it's I, extremely durable, but. Yeah. These are tougher. For so, sure. like, I knew we were going to have this, that this is the area that they were going to try and win some points back on me. But I can only speak from my experience flying this. Now, when I tested this, I was very fortunate. The Vandy style team pilots, we all took the final version, which was supposed to release in April of 2022. We didn't release until August because it wasn't until I had guys like ATEC FBB, who is the hardest ripper I've ever seen fly outside of Sean. We found areas where we changed stuff, just little tiny tweaks. It is a very, very durable frame. If we want to sit here, I'm not going to sit here and waste my energy in trying to convince these guys that it is, it's not the most durable frame on the table. The tank is definitely the most durable frame on the table. But I got to be perfectly honest, I think the all of weight of this quad compared to the all of weight of yours for, if, if like just the raw frame itself is a tiny bit less durable than maybe the Moxie and the Drib, but the fact that it's 100 grams lighter, I'm, I'm telling you, this is same durability as that. Probably that as well. I'm I just trying know. to think of like because it's not as heavy. Though. I, I, I appreciate that you'll yeah. concede and say that the tank is. Oh, that's not, than yours. I, I that's not an argument. You, I will give you uh, a little bit of points on making your frame ultra light. In that, the yeah. heavier you are, the harder you fall. The thing about durability is, uh, you want to make things tougher. You're adding more material. Mm -hmm. You're reinforcing weak points, and things are getting heavier and heavier. So naturally, you kind of think, you know, heavier must mean more durable. Mm. But you're exactly right. The heavier you are, the harder you crash. You've got more. Momentum. Mm -hmm. What's the equation for momentum, Bubby? I don't know. Rho equals mass, mass times, times velocity. velocity. Bro, okay. I knew okay. that. So two okay. things going at the same speed. Yeah. The heavier one has a harder change of momentum. Yes. Yep. That doesn't okay. make sense. That hurts more. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, here's my thing too. I I'm gonna rank and durability on these frames and might shock you, but then I'm gonna at least give my vouch for the Vane style and I think everyone will get their vouch. We know Sean's is the most durable, so he doesn't get to talk. <laughs> Sean's is the most durable frame. These tie for second, that's the worst. Do you think the Moxie is the least durable? Here's my thing with this. There is more to durability than what you, there, the biggest thing you think of is like, okay, it's the lightest, it's gonna be the most fragile. But there's a couple of things that I wanna compare Moxie frame wise. Can I get that yeah, one, please? Right, yeah. Okay. So first off, I, in full disclosure, have not flown the Moxie, so I'm gonna speak so little on this, but I'm just going to I've give- I've never flown it, but I've got a very firm opinion. But <laughs> I'm gonna say some things because just like these guys have seen me fly and Sean was making fun of me breaking arms, I get to at least do this. And then I'll talk about Drew. Wait, so you broke I have flown. He broke I, I, yeah, I broke I two can't arms. Remember I, I broke, right. yeah, it's fine. I broke in four arms total now in nine months of production. He broke two of them but while I, he was here. What's <laughs> wrong with this quad right now? His quad is literally broken. Okay, but that was on the. the yeah, I was going to point out the standoffs on talking, both of your Bobby? frames. Listen, I've flown the Skyliner, okay? Here's the thing this is a super duper long top plate, right? Can break here. Also, another thing, yeah, but have you 25, 25 millimeter standoffs, taller standoffs, much, much easier to bend, especially. Yeah, okay. But look, but look. Yes, but look. Okay, 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 but look, but look, look. Oh, 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 oh
said I said I would talk first because okay. you all came at me. All right. Hey, he, he has I have the, the floor. I have the, the floor. Yeah. I have the floor. Hold on. <laughs> One thing I did on the veiny style to make the nose very durable because I do have uh, taller standoffs on the nose is these camera plates, these carbon fiber camera plates, they are not your typical like 1.5 millimeter thick plates. They are two and a half millimeters thick. Makes the nose super, super duper strong. It is I don't have any. He's got the share care. Sorry. Dude, yours is the most dur durable. <laughs> you know it doesn't fly the best, but it's most durable. All right, all right. So the point is, it's a very, very strong nose on the frame. Now, in terms of everything else on it, it is super duper compact. It's lighter. I believe that that weight difference alone compared to the 200 grams more that this weighs, if it's a little bit thicker in sections, I, I've seen Bobby break places like this. I haven't seen him break an arm. That's true. But I've seen him break the other pieces. What pieces? All right, I've now seen Kayla. you break the bottom plate. I've seen you break the camera plate. The camera? Oh, have, well, I've never broken I, a camera not plate. The cam sorry, the um, bottom plate. Th this. Sorry, the top plate. I, for some reason, right, that Caleb, was Alex has just savagely attacked you on a personal level. How how do you refute? How do you re rebuke? Rebuttal? Well, he rebuttal. This is like rebuttal. the most durable. Rebuttal. Sean's problem. I mean, the whole 25 millimeter standoff point, I have these chunky vertical you camera do. plates. So Why if, are you bending if, if, if Yeah, I'm bending the front ones, but you know who cares about the front ones? Yeah, but, you're, but look, at, there's no material for the carbon here. That's why it erupted here as well. That was the, I can't explain how gnarly of a crash this was. I know, but like, See, look, here, here's the issue. There's no okay, material well, here. I have, I have to talk about I'm going to nitpick little things. I, I would say, see how he does have more carbon yes. between the that's, edge I of his, there. his head there? And then that there. gives it more of a lip to grab. No, mm, it doesn't. Fair point. It gives it more of a lip to grab. Fair I've point. I've, I haven't broken a single thing there okay. since doing that. I will, that was an A-Tech video. You don't freaking crash ever. Okay. That's that, true. But you don't, you don't crash. I full agree. Yeah. I wouldn't say never. He's speaking hyperbole yes, here. Strong, but so seriously, the, you're, you are really good at flying. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you're really that. good. Yeah. We, the we three crash. of us all crash way harder. I way more than, than you. you do. And no one crashes harder than Sean. And here's the thing. That's true. Here's the thing. That's true. If we were taking uh, advice on picking a race frame, there's no one better at the table yeah. to listen to than you. You yeah. know racing. Yeah, that's but fine. Sean knows crashing. I know crashing. Oh, okay, so he, <laughs> Alex, you gave your ranking. Sean, how yeah. do you rank durability? Yeah. How do I rank durability? Well, this is the most durable. Okay, what's number two? I would say, honestly, only because I've seen the, I haven't flown this one yet, but the Mark II Skyliner was the most durable frame I ever flew in my entire life up until I built my own. Okay, and so this is number two. The Moxie, I think, I, I would okay. I would rank them most durable, second most durable, third most durable, Tooth weakest. Mix. Exactly, because the arm you literally broke two arms in this week. Can I at least can two I days. defend myself on that? <laughs> so yes, I, I did know you meant it. To, you built it to break an two arm things. specifically because that's three, where you wanted your weak point three to be. Very and I get it. Yeah. On this. One thing, this was a very very old drone. So there this is, is a very very old drone, guys. Adults this are talking. This is a very old drone. See, I'm defending my point there. That's fine. Let me very old drone. So yes, I did break an arm. These guys say that I don't crash a lot. You're right. I don't crash a lot, but when I do crash, and Sean was in the goggles with me, it was one a hard crash. Yesterday, it was so hard that the Kevlar battery strap, which Sean oh, could yeah. not believe, ripped. Yeah, it he's... was very hard, and I I broke the arm right where I designed it to break. I wanted the breaking point to be right here, so it doesn't break in here, and it's super hard to get out. Broke right there. Swapped the arm out in eight minutes. Was back up to flying. I'll give you that. That was a hard everything. crash. It was very hard. The that one was a hard crash. where I broke the other arm was a blind Rubik's cube. For a trick tutorial, by the way, straight full speed into a tree. Okay. Killed the I'm GoPro and everything. I mean, that like, was a hard I, 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 I can bend these. I just away. don't want them to say way. that I don't crash if hard. If you got a doctor and a lawyer, you should probably take medical advice from the doctor. If you got a Vanny and a Shawnee, you should probably <laughs> take durability <laughs> advice from. Yeah. I mean, I you, you, so you guys saw we just part. released the GeForce Quad episode where we were like full throttled this thing in the ground. Did you see? Respect, dude, oh, I know. I'm not saying the tank's not the most durable. You, so I'm he not, knows. I'm not battling Sean. <laughs> so he knows. He yeah, can. but if I, I could do the same thing, I can make the arms 10 millimeters thick, and you'd be like, oh, but talk to. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm saying yeah. this is, you know, these are probably tougher than yours, and they. Do you have thicker arms? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yours, yours so would fly better absolutely. based yeah. on what you want out of flight. Sure, but I mean, I've right? seen you break arms too, and I'm not nitpicking that. It happens to everyone. I understand it happens to everyone. It break eventually. I, mm -hmm. I agree. Yes. But it's the thing is, blind. I don't break mine that much. I Yes, I broke two on this trip from two very, very, very hard crashes. One that killed a GoPro, another one that was 
full throttle into a tree mm -hmm. from a blind a tree. A tree. A tree. A tree. A tree. A tree. It was a not tree. a soft like tree. The I have I've never broken into. something on a tree. I frame heart. I've I, never broken. I've never broken any. I that's cannot. Fine. Yeah. That's fine. If you want to fly a good quad, you can fly face style. If you want to. No one's arguing with that. I know. No it's very nice. durable. It's I've had. Nice. I just. The if you see the way that you rip, and you are fantastic. I'm so strong. If you see the way that he's flying, and you want the best shot at flying on Alex's level. You probably want a setup to match his, but if you see the way that we crash and you know, Sean crashes, you know, Sean you does crash want, the hardest. You want a little bit tougher frame. The thing though is, I mentioned I think is our I frames are probably kind of the best of both worlds. You know, yeah. I saying. so strongly disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, it's strongly. I had very thankful. The shout out to all the Vanny Style Team pilots as well as ATEC FBB who helped me test this. I know for a fact. Pretty sure. I know for mostly a fact that I'm the only one here who actually really did like go out be, and like have other people. I handed out frames as early as Rampage last year, West Coast Throwdown. I handed out a bunch before they went into production because I wanted to get people to like see if they could break it in places that I couldn't. And sure enough, people do crash more than I do. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple little spots we you know changed a couple things around, and then people were absolutely loving it. So. I understand what they're saying, but I, just keep that in mind. I'll give you a I lot saw. of points. I think there, there are a lot of smart things here. The the amount of extra meat that you have from mm -hmm. the screw to the edge of the carbon. Yep. You know, I, I hear what you're saying that it catches, but I, I <laughs> no, think it, does not, I think it no. doesn't really because catch. Even if you then hit, the you arms, hit. you're going to yeah, hit, you're gonna hit the arms. I think that extra meat is going to make a big difference in, in having, you know, like what you're having here. You know, I'm yeah. just I'm and just saying it's a it's, it's a durable the first frame. Time I've had something like that. And you yeah. have to weigh all these things too because it's not just the ultimate durability that you have to weigh. You have to mm -hmm. weigh the things that we talked about, like ease of repair as well. It's much harder to change this plate out than it is if you have to change this plate out and yeah. if you do inevitably break yeah. it. Yeah. Sean kind of completes the ease of repair and durability. I'll give him that. And then for like him, his performance would probably be the lower end, but he definitely does strive the best. I would say in some of those other areas. Uh, yeah, you know the best way to the best way to make it uh, easy to maintain is to just never make have it, to maintain don't it. Have to break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest ding against your durability are the narrow arms, which are mm -hmm. essential for the flight feeling yep. that you want. But I think yep. your arms are going to be the least durable. If I we think just, our if arms we are about the same durability. Dude, yours are four, no you're four way, millimeter. Dude, yours are four millimeter though. These so are here's five the thing. So this is going. This is going back to. What the material we're using here, we're yeah. using woven carbon fiber. This is not aluminum, okay? Yeah. So if we were milling out aluminum, the, the cross-sectional area is probably a, a good way to compare the two arms. But it's more than cross-sectional area because you've got the integrity of the weave. So I think about, take, take like a t-shirt. And yeah, start, I understand what you're start saying. Start cutting, well, I'm explaining to them too. Oh, sorry. Guys. Take a t-shirt and start cutting strips of the t-shirt narrower and narrower and eventually you're going to get to a point where the whole thing just falls apart because the the weave doesn't have any integrity left like mm -hmm. carbon fiber is a cloth it, yeah, literally is a literally, cloth when you get yeah. raw carbon mm -hmm. fiber it is fabric yeah, and like it's it, when, the, the thing about a composite is you have a reinforcing material which is the carbon in this case carbon fiber fabric and then you've got a, a resin material that cures hard and holds it very rigid and carbon fiber is just an incredible composite material but having a a, a weave with a good amount of overlapping strands i think is uh, is really important to have right, a durable part. Right, it's the weave part. that makes it strong. Exactly. I saw, you, I saw you make this point on Facebook. I saw a lot of people complaining about your frame, about how it looked old school, and you didn't make any change to it. And there was a lot of people that were making a fuss about your frame and having big, fat arms. Uh, you know, you've always loved the way individual ESCs fly. You always felt mm -hmm. that they were more responsive or whatever. They just had better flight performance than a 4-in-1. You, you hesitated to move to 4-in-1, and so did I for a long time, because yeah. I was following your advice. Um, and that's why you made your arms the way they were. But also, you, I saw you have your talking point about the way the carbon fiber was weaved together, and the strength comes from the weave. And I thought that was a really intelligent way to look at it, and I never thought about it that way. Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. it, it's not a, it's not a solid material. You look at like aluminum, mm -hmm. it is uniformly strong in any direction and cross-sectional area plays a big role. But you look at a composite, it's gonna, if you look at it, a composite and carbon fiber specifically, it's strong in one direction more than the other, which is why it's really important when you make arms that you have the weave oriented the correct way. Look at, look at any uh, mm -hmm. frame that has some thought into it and you'll see the, the weave is gonna run 
the length of the arm. If you had it at a 45 degree angle, yeah. and we've seen this happen before in some prototypes that were accidentally cut the wrong way, and you can bend the arm with your hands. It is, yeah. it is wild. So it's really important to think about these things. I think I'm always going to have a wider than average arm because, you know, in my mind, coming at it from you know, a little bit of an understanding of composites. I want to have a, a lot of overlapping fibers. You know, your arm is just as narrow as Alex, but the thing is, I think you just killed it with layers of carbon <laughs> fiber. Because, I mean, to get the thickness of carbon fiber, you actually have, you know, different layers. If you look at the side of these plates, you can feel you can feel the different layers of carbon. Yeah, there's and a lot of layers there. Yeah, <laughs> you a have. Lot of layers there. Or when you look at where it's like broken and split, you can see how it how it splits apart. Ooh, what are you doing? There's layers. Did you that, just put it in, on your hand? Oh my gosh, that's I, so bad. Ah, oh my gosh. Ah. You, don't do that, kids. <laughs> it, carbon, fi carbon fiber splinters are nasty. So when you've got fraying edges like that, be careful. But yeah, you, know, you, you can see. Careful. We'll get a close up of this. You can see. The, the layers coming apart from all from all the crashing, mm -hmm. and so even though I think that you have you know kind of maybe crossed a line where the, the there's not as much less weave weave right. as I'd like. I mean you've just got so many layers. I mean you've just got a lot of resin in there. So I mean the proof is in the pudding. We literally slammed this in the ground full send three times in a row and still didn't break an arm. It broke right there, and since then, by the way, I've got a new bottom plate that addresses that issue. So. Really? It's still not going to break in that crash now today. Mm -hmm. At I least mean, not yeah. there. <laughs> There's definitely no debate when it comes to your frame is the most durable frame. There's not going to be any debate there. I would again argue that my frame is on the same level of durability, but you know what? You guys can try it and find out. There's been a lot of people who have flown all these frames. They can try they all can... of them. Buy all four. <laughs> yeah. right right com. Com, baby. There's yeah. the plug. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. That's right. But, <laughs> yeah, we didn't really talk about the durability of the TPU mount and the GoPro. Because when you add the TPU mounted GoPro, um, I've noticed that when you only mount them with screws, like on Alex's frame right there, the screw, the screws end up getting stripped out. And yeah, this is one of my least favorite things yeah. is, is yeah. having the GoPro get ripped out. Yeah. I, this, I mean, we I, all three this, have standoffs yeah, locking this, ours in place. I, I, yeah. I did this first yeah, uh, yeah, on our yeah, table, on our table, table right? So I did that to, yeah. to get that more durability. It helped a lot, but every now and then, mm -hmm. I still do have the yeah. back two rip out. Mm -hmm. That's never going to happen to you because you're mounted on two horizontal standoffs. You don't have any through screws, so that's nice. Well, so, yeah. so mine actually, the way I have mine, I have one horizontal standoff in the middle, and then it also mounts on the front and back. Right. So it. I mean, for pulling this way, it kind of gets stopped by this super thick. Three those are definitely the most, I mean, I will agree. I'll concede and say those are going to be more durable overall. But I would say that these mounts, I use just washers underneath. And that probably I helps a lot. I mean, yeah. before I used to do this, I would, you know, the screws would come through in very, very hard impacts. Mm -hmm. Haven't had one of those happen in a long time. I would say it's probably 90% as durable as what they're using. So, and you I mean, can also make the TPU that, a lot thicker, and too. And that's the thing, too, is like, <laughs> it's, it's, you're, we're, again, all talking very, very hard impacts. I, yeah. So, I want to do something. Okay. I want each of us to pick our favorite frame on the table that can't be your own. Ooh, mm. Right, and why? You know, let's say, hey, we, we just got into kind of a little bit of heat there, arguing that's over what even is durability. Right, but now let's just try it. Let's, let's I be nice say, to each I other. I want to say right? mine because I think it'll shock people. Of course, you want to go first. Tank. Whoa! Here's whoa! Why. May I? Wow! <laughs> I I did not see that one coming. Me either. So here's the thing. For me, when it comes to the most important thing is flight performance. And you're like, well, why did I go with the heaviest frame? Well, the reality is. These three options are all very, very heavy. So the big, biggest noticeable difference is in the aerodynamics, and that's with the thin arms. Second thing when it comes to performance, and this is more from a tuning standpoint, is much, much easier, A, to tune with more of your weight in the center, and that's what you get with the toilet tank setup that you don't get with your battery's long ways. And from a durability standpoint as well, like Sean and I talked about, your battery does not eject into the back of your GoPro. So I would go with this frame 100%. Didn't even take me a second to, I didn't even cross my mind. I flew the Skyline in the past, haven't flown the Moxie. I love the other little things that Sean did, similar to mine, the press nuts. I like the camera mount. It's a no-brainer for me. I'd fly the, the tank if it wasn't for mine. Uh, that being said, like, that was only the options I had to choose from, respectfully. <laughs> but, I mean, there's not many toilet tank frames out there on the market as well. So mm -hmm. that's a big, that toilet tank's big for me. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick, you know, there's something about me that, uh, there's something about just only having carbon fiber pieces that I really like. It just feels... A little more purist in a sense, like having an aluminum front cage. I don't. I'm. I'm just not fully about it. 
uh, you know, I would say that would be kind of fun with the aluminum cage because I could have a little bit of fun maybe powder coating the front end different colors and spicing it up. So, you know, that's fun. Mm -hmm. The thinner arms would be different. So I, I like your frame a lot, but if I had to pick, I'm, I'm going to go with Alex's. Hey. I mean, it's, it, I don't know. It's, it's it. the most, <laughs> it, it's a toss up. It's a toss up because Sean's, I think, is going to fly more the way that I like. It's going to have the weight. Yours is not necessarily going to be my favorite flight characteristics because it is, you know, really locked in and just super grippy. But, you know, I like kind of the classic look of it. So, I, I, I don't know. Maybe the tank axe. I, ah, either way. It's a tie. One of your, one of your two. No offense, Bobby. I just, you know. What, what would you pick, though? Um, I probably would do... I've flown the Skyliner before, and I really like that frame. Skyliner. Yeah, I was going to say that it would be hard. It would be depending on what, for me, it would depend on what my um, what my goal was. Uh, I would love to try to fly Alex's frame because of the lightness and just feel the difference. I would just love to have one just to feel the difference and feel what it feels like to fly like Alex because I'm sure the flight performance is just amazing and I'm sure that the flight experience would be amazing. I did fly the Skyliner for two years and that was my favorite frame. And it was surprising because, like I said, I design, I've been designing my own frame since 2013, so I've been designing frames for 10 years. And even the, own, even the frames that I designed for myself after whatever that was, like five or six years of designing, the Skyliner was still stronger than the ones that I designed. So I was like, that is an amazing frame. And I flew for two years, no problem. And I loved it. And I still think that that's probably my frame of choice if I'm going to go freestyle. And then Alex's frame if I just really wanted to have that light feeling experience, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Skyliner, I think I would choose this because first off, the biggest thing is you got that standoff. Yeah, GoPro. you want that to get your GoPro mount. Yeah, yeah, that's like the biggest thing for me, like the difference between, I guess your frame has standoffs too, mm -hmm. but that one just, I think the GoPro mounts would rip off too much for me at least, yeah. the, way I, the way I crash. Um, also, wide arms on yours would fly similar to how mine are. All right, you got your 15 second elevator pitch and go. I think you should fly the Vane style because you get the best of every single one. You have a nice balance between performance, durability, and ease of repair. It fits the most electronics out of all the frames out there, and plus, It'll make you fly like Vanover. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, all right. 12.9. Okay, okay. The Skyliner, I've been refining this design for many years. It's on its third iteration. I'm really proud of how this has uh, come to be. The low center of gravity flies very nicely. It is super durable. It has everything about the old school that you like with a nice new... time. Dang. <laughs> uh, that was... That felt way longer. Yeah. Okay. And seconds. go. Watch my last flight video. If you want to be a flow master, you got to get the flow master drone. This thing is, it's a flow machine. That's all I got to tell you. He should have just said, watch my last flight video. Watch my last flight video. And Sean, go. Fly more, repair less. That's all I got to say. If you want to learn how to get better, you have to crash. If you're not crashing, you're not pushing yourself, you're not getting better. Fly more, crash more, repair less. I think Sean had the best pitch. Sean had the best pitch. Sean yes. had his best pitch. But does that mean he has the best drone? I don't know. Which drone on the table is objectively the best <laughs> drone? I'm going to say it's, you know what? It's subjective, guys. Honestly, mm, yeah. there's different frame styles for the different types of freestyle that you want to do, the different types of cinematography that you want to do, the different types of crashing yeah. that you want to do. It truly is subjective. There isn't a right or wrong answer, but that doesn't mean that we don't have strong opinions, and I'm sure that you also have some strong opinions. Oh, we so know you have strong opinions. So why don't you go down there to the comment section <laughs> and let us know everything we didn't think about, and every, every, what is your favorite frame? Yeah. I'd love to know if it's one of the four on this table. Or we love hearing from you guys, and if you do want to pick up one of these frames or fully built drones, they are all available at rotoriot.com. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. We're posting drone content all the time. You know you don't want to miss an episode, so while you're subscribing, hit the bell, then we can notify you hey we posted come hang out watch us we're back at it again guys either way happy flying happy guys, flying guys i'm ladrib i'm alex fanover i'm bubby fpv let's fly rc we'll see you next time on rotor riot Whee!